Right, let's move on with our trigonometry and we're doing exam papers. This is how they set it. You are proving that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Whatever we have here, it must be equal to 3 sine squared x. The mistake that we do as young learners, we divorce mathematics from reality. What does two boys mean? It means Rafana Babi. Five desks, I'm a desk I'm a Two x, then people start to, to shave on. Two x simply means or x about two. 2p squared or p squared about 2. 3 sine x or sine x about 3. 3 sine squared x or sine squared x about 3. That helps when you move so that you can see those sine squared x until they are 3. Let's move on. You, I said it is important that you must brush off the problem first to see where your starting point are. When I brush this one off, I see a 90. And I know that 90 will change the ratio. This is 180, does not change the ratio. This is 360, does not change the ratio. And I can see where I start. I start where there are brackets. I'm taking the left hand side, the complicated side. You always take the complicated side. At times you need to, you can move with both sides until they are equal. But in this case, let's take the left hand side. 90 minus, that's the quadrant. Right, if, if you look at this one, 90 minus, which quadrant is 90 minus? It is the first quadrant. And how is cosine on the first quadrant? It is positive. But because we had this 90, the cos will change into sine of this angle, which is 2x. Right? Now, as, as I write this, it should tell me the next step. Sine 2x. What topic is this? It's a double angle. And I know how to break this one in the next step. Times. 180 plus. Which quadrant is 180 plus? 180 plus, it is the, the third quadrant. It is advisable that you must always have this. All students take coke. This is 180, I mean, this is, this is theta or 90 minus, 90 degrees minus theta. This is uh, 90 plus theta. This is uh, 180 minus theta. This is 180 plus theta. So in this case, we are talking of 180 plus. Which quadrant is 180 plus? It is the third quadrant. And how is tan on the third quadrant? It is positive. So this becomes tan x. And I know how to deal with tan, quotient identity. Tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. I even know the next step to write here because I'm, I, I use my building blocks that we used earlier on. Let's move to the other part, which is plus. Okay, 360 minus. Which quadrant is 360 minus? 360 minus here is here on the fourth quadrant. 360 minus, you go back. So it's 360 minus theta. It is the fourth quadrant. How is sine on the fourth quadrant? Listen carefully. How is sine on the fourth quadrant? It is negative because only cos is positive on the fourth quadrant. However, if you square something that is negative, it will be positive. Hence, this is no longer negative. It is positive because we are squaring it. 360 minus is the fourth, quad fourth quadrant. It does not change the sign. So because we are squaring it, going to be sine squared x. Right? Uh, of course, it must be equal to 3 sine squared x. Let's look at what we have. We've got this. And what do we want to get? We want to get 3 sine squared x. And what is that? All sine squared, all sine squared x about 3. Do we have any? Ah, we already have 1, but we need 3. So I don't interfere with what is taking me towards the solution. I'm not going to interfere with this. I need to work this with, with this one out such that it will move me towards my solution, which is 3 sine squared x. Let's move on. This then becomes, oh, I know exactly how to deal with this. I know how to deal with this. I don't have to interfere with that one. It's taking me towards the solution. What is this going to be? It's a double angle for sine. You go to your formula sheet. It is always given there. It is 2 sine x cos x. Right. This is what it becomes. Times. What is tan x? Tan x is the same quotient identity. Sine x over cos x. I don't disturb that one. It's plus sine 2x. I've already have one. I'm short of two. So this, I, I, can, I must get two of, of the same thing. So that I'll add them and get three. Let's move on. Because we are multiplying, we are allowed to do this. Goes there once. Sine x times sine x times 2. It is 2 sine squared x 
plus sine squared x, which is that one, 2 plus 1, it will give us 3 of each, 3 sine squared x, exactly what we wanted to get. All that you need to do is to change what you can change using the basics that we started with. I want us to go to the other one there. Uh, it's about five marks. We are given two sides as well. The left hand prove that the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Uh, let us take the the left hand side. There are so many approaches to this one, but let's try and work it out together. Tan x minus one. If I have okay, I know I can I can change this one. I can change tan x into sine x over cos x. I can change this one. Ah, because it's a sine 2x, which was the same as this one. So I'll, I'll change it into this. That's the name of the game. Mm, I don't see this at the moment. I'll work on it as, as soon as we go to it, if I need to change it. But I know my starting point. I know where to start. If I've got this one, I'm taking the left-hand side as well. This would be sine x over cos x minus 1. Okay? If I have minus 1 here, I will have two denominators which are not the same. But I want to make them the same. There's nothing stopping me from changing this one into cos x over cos x. Why am I doing this? I want to make these denominators to be the same. Right? Let me move on. I know this side. I can change this one. What is that going to be? This will be 2 sine x cos x, right? Let me write that as it is, minus 2 cos squared x, because I don't see that at the moment. That's what I have. Okay. We are multiplying. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Let me work this one out. The same denominator of cos x, because I see brackets there, goes there. On top, I will have sine x minus cos x. This is what I have, this side. Let me go to the other brackets. Uh, uh, uh. What do I notice there? I see a 2 here, I see a 2. I see a cos x, I see a cos x. What do you call that? A common factor. Let's take it out. Let's take out a common factor here. Let's use this bracket so that we can say 2 cos x into if I take 2 cos x this side, I'll be left with sine x minus. If I take 2 cos x, I'll be left with 1 cos x. Right. We close this bracket. That's what we have on the other side. Wow. This problem was, was merciful to us. It is easier. We can divide this and this one. We are allowed to do that. Uh, it goes there once. Now watch here. If I have x times Two times y because you are multiplying. You can, this is the same as two times x times y. You can start with anyone when you are multiplying because bracket means times. I'm multiplying this, that, and that. I can start with anyone. What is what is pushing me towards that? I'm thinking of what I need to get there. I see a two outside because you are multiplying this times this times that, I can start with anyone. Because 2 is outside here, I can start with this 2, this side. Let's do this thing. 2 times this one, which is sine x minus cos x times sine x minus cos x. Oh, sine x minus cos x, sine x minus cos x. I don't have to write it again. I simply use squared. That's what I have. I don't forget what I want to get at the end of the day. Let's work it out. Remember your grade 8, grade 9, or even your calculus. If we've got x plus h, x plus h, all squared. Squaring a binomial from grade 9. We say x times x, this is x squared. x times h, xh, double that, 2xh, and h times h, it is h squared. That's what we need to do here. It is exactly the same thing. We are squaring a binomial. This then will be 2 into sine x times sine x, it is sine squared x, sine squared x, sine x times cos x minus sine cos, minus sine x cos x, double that, minus 2 
sin x cos x. The third step, minus cos x times minus cos x, it will give us plus cos squared x. That's what we have, that side. If we take this further, this will be, I don't want to disturb the 2 because I see it then, 2 into. Now watch here. Your identities becomes important. Your square identities. Look at this one. Sine squared x plus this one. What does it give us? It gives us 1. So it is 1 minus. I don't know what that is. I write it as it is 2 sine x cos x. Ah, it is exactly what we wanted to get. This is how you do this without using a calculator. Thank you.